Hello and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Be Quiet's brand new Soundloop 2 360mm AIO. So first of all I'm going to be showing you how to install this killer and I'm going to be doing that in my personal system behind me. Big reason for doing that in my own system, at the moment in that system I have the Pure Loop 360mm AIO and I've already got my noise and temperature levels recorded. So I'm really interested to see how this cooler performs compared to the Pure Loop and what benefits it offers. So make sure to stick to the end of the video if you want to see how this performs and importantly whether I would recommend getting this over the Pure Loop AIO. Okay, first job to do is to get the fans onto the radiator. Now importantly, mate, you're going to want these wires coming out towards the back. We're going to use these long radiator screws to secure the fans. Coming from each of the fans, we've got a standard 4-pin fan connector, which we're going to need to plug into a triple splitter cable. So we'll go ahead and get these plugged in. Now we've got one single 4-pin fan connector which we're going to need to plug into the CPU fan header on our motherboard. I'm going to talk you through the cables coming from the pump now, but it's much easier to show you them on the flat table than it is once we put things into the case. The first connector is a standard 3-pin fan connector, and this is going to power our pump. So we're going to need to plug this into the pump header on our motherboard. The other cable coming from our pump is a standard 3-pin 5-volt addressable ARGB connector which we need to plug into one of the ARGB headers on our motherboard to allow our motherboard's ARGB software to control the lighting on the pump head. There's no lighting on these fans so it's just the lighting on the pump that it's going to control. So it's really nice to see coming from the same cable BeQuiet have included another ARGB header. So even though you plug this into your motherboard, you've got another header here that you can plug an additional ARGB device into. So really nice touch. If your motherboard doesn't have an ARGB header, or for whatever reason you don't want to use your motherboard software to control the ARGB, be quiet and include a controller which you can use instead. So all you would need to do is plug the cable coming from the pump into this controller. And the other end of the controller, you're gonna to need to plug a SATA cable in. And then you're going to need to plug this into a SATA cable coming from your power supply. Then you're going to be able to use the buttons on the controller to cycle through the various ARGB effects. And what's even better, because you've got this additional header, if your motherboard doesn't have ARGB, you can add other devices in as well. The final thing to mention about the ARGB is you've got this light bar around the pump here which lights up. And obviously whether you use the controller or your motherboard software, you're going to be able to control this lighting. The Be Quiet logo also lights up, but only lights up in white, and it doesn't actually sync with this ARGB here. So you, you can either leave this on or turn it off, whatever your preference is. If you want to turn it off, you need to use this little tool here, which you'll find in the back of your instruction manual. It looks like a SIM card removal tool, and there's a little hole at the top of the pump head. All you would do is press down here. You'll hear a little click as you do, and that then will turn the lighting off. Obviously go in again, press again, and you'll turn the light back on again. Then we can go ahead and secure the radiator into the case using the short radiator screws. Next I'm going to go ahead and plug the cable coming from our fans into our CPU fan header which is in this header here just at the top of the motherboard. And then I'm just going to pull all the excess cable through to the back of the case. Okay, we're now ready to go ahead and install the brackets that are going to hold the pump to the motherboard because we're not going to use these stock brackets. So I'm going to show you today how to install this on an AMD AM4 socket. If you've got an Intel socket, um, I have installed this killer on an Intel build before. You'll find that in my Antec P120 Crystal build guide and there'll be a link to that in the description. What I would normally recommend doing is installing the brackets when you've got the motherboard out of the case because it's much easier to do that. The problem is this is my own personal system and I'm not going to take the motherboard out. It makes sense for me to do this while the motherboard's still in the case. But if you're doing a build from new, that's the way I would recommend doing it. Um, if I take both these clips off, each clip's held on with two screws, the back plate is going to fall away. So I'm just going to do one of them at a time. If you have got your motherboard flat on the table, it's going to hold the back plate in place. So you can go ahead and do both together. 
Okay, first thing to do is to put these little spacers over each of the corners. Next thing to do is to put the bracket on. In each corner we have two holes. One is labelled AM4, so we're going to go ahead and put the screws through the hole labelled AM4. Now we are going to want it with this little pointed end facing towards the CPU, and all we're going to do is lower the screws through the spacers and into our stock motherboard back place. What I have found, if you give each of the screws a little turn by hand just to get it to catch with the back plate, you'll find screwing it in that little bit easier. And then we can go ahead and tighten things up with the screwdriver. Okay, so it's exactly the same process with the top bracket. Next we just need to add a pea-sized amount of thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. Now importantly, if you are using the cooler for the first time, you'll have some plastic protection on the cold plate which you're going to need to remove. I've used this before, so that's why I'm going to skip this step. So all we need to do is just line the pump head up with the brackets that we've just put on. Once we're happy everything is lined up, we can go ahead and tighten things into place with a screwdriver. Next thing to do is to plug the wires coming from the pump in. So we've got this three pin connector which we're going to need to plug into the fan header on our motherboard. So it's just here. Line things up and push into place. And then I'm just going to push all the excess cable through to the back. The last cable to plug in is our ARGB cable and we've got two options for this. We can plug it into the ARGB header on our motherboard. So I'll do that. And then all we would do is pull the excess cable through to the back. The option I'm actually going to go for is I'm going to go ahead and use the controller because I'm keen to show you what effect you get with the included controller. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull this cable through to the back. At the back of the case then we can go ahead and plug the ARGB cable into our controller. Taking the SATA cable that we plugged in earlier on and plug it into a SATA cable coming from our power supply. And then all we would have to do is a bit of cable management at the back. Now I want to give you a quick run through of how this controller works. Looking at the controller we've got three buttons. We've got M for mode and then we've got up and down arrows to cycle through the various effects. Now what mode you're in is shown by the colour of the LED light on the top. At the moment it's set to orange and orange will let you cycle through the various colours. So I'll press the up arrow to cycle through the different colours and show you what's available. that's us back to white and it's a nice bright white which is good to see. So if I go ahead and press the mode button again, the colour of the LED changes to yellow. You probably can't actually see that very well but then if I press the up arrow again that is then going to cycle through the illumination effect. If I go ahead and press the mode button again it's going to change to green and green is going to adjust the speed so if I press the speed up the speed should increase pressing the down arrow the speed of the effect will decrease pressing the mode button again we'll notice the LED has changed to blue and that is going to let us adjust the brightness so we'll turn things down you'll notice things are fading all the way down the up arrow again, it's going to brighten up again. And if we press mode again, it's going to change to red, and red is the special effects. So I'll show you these. The last thing I want to show you is how to turn off the Be Quiet logo. So we've got the tool from the accessory manual, put it into this little hole, press down and you'll notice the lighting has turned off. We're going to turn it back on again, it's just the same process and that's it back on. Okay so now we've got things looking great, I think it's important we move our attentions to seeing how the cooler performed. Now importantly I do have a Ryzen 9 5900X which is a very difficult CPU to cool. 
So looking at our idle temperatures, our CPU idled at 32 degrees, and under a 20 minute idle 64 stability test, it reached a maximum temperature of 84 degrees. Comparing performance to the pure loop, using the silent loop 2, our CPU idled 1 degree cooler, while it was 3 degrees cooler under the IDA64 stability test. Comparing the noise levels, our silent loop 2 was 1 decibel quieter at idle, while there was no difference under load conditions. While there doesn't seem to be a significant difference in the noise levels, it is important to mention that the other fans in the system, such as the fans in the graphics card and the Lian Li Uni fans, which I've used as case fans, can actually mask any differences in the noises between the coolers. So we've now reached a stage in the review where I need to share my thoughts on the Silent Loop 2 and recommend whether you should actually go out and get it. And I have been fairly impressed with this cooler. I think it's a great looking cooler. You can look at the water block, I think it looks great. The white light on it is great in colour. I like the fact that you've got nice thick tubing. You've got an all black radiator without any writing on it. I was never a fan of having pure loop written on the radiator. I think if it's one of your budget range items, you're better not to show that off. And the silent wing fans look great and perform great. And we've got some great temperatures with this killer. I also think the ARGB controller is incredibly good. And I like the way that Be Quiet have done that with a little indicator light to show you which mode that you're on. So like a lot of Be Quiet products, I was fairly impressed with this killer. And I think if you are in the market for an AIO, I can definitely recommend the Silent Loop 2. So hopefully you find the video useful. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.